How's it going everyone, College Lefty, and in this video we are going to be making the push towards World Series. Uh, this is the squad that we're going to be rocking with to try to get into the World Series. I've been kind of struggling, I've been kind of bouncing back and forth between Championship Series and Division Series. If you guys have been keeping up with the videos, then you would have seen that as well. So this is going to be the squad. I have uh, picked up Tom Glavin, I recently sold him and I put Kyle Wright back into the rotation, if you all know. The fourth inning program is going to be released a few days from now, and uh, we are going to see a signature series Joe Torre, most likely a King Felix Hernandez, maybe a Cy Young version of him, and then also Jacoby Ellsbury for the Red Sox. I talked about it in my previous video as well, so let's go ahead and get into some rank seasons gameplay. I'm not quite sure what happened to the first inning, but I was able to score three runs in the first inning on some, uh, some weird hits. I mean, some jammed hits, but uh, let's go ahead and and get the face cam out of the way for the PCI placement. So we have a four to one lead now as Nolan Gorman hits a perfect, perfect the other way for a solo shot. Mike Trout is sending one uh, through the shift there. Kind of uh, would have been a ground ball to shortstop, but since they have the shift on him, that is going to be a base hit as well. Later in the game, Mickey Mantle goes deep, opposite field on a good, good swing. PCI not all the way on the ball, but we are going up against Nate Pearson, so he is going to supply that exit velocity that we need. At least you would think. I mean, 102 miles an hour coming in, and it was hit only 101 off the bat, but that will certainly help hit that exit velocity over 100 miles an hour. So anyway, Pablo Sanchez also making his debut. Uh, at least the 89 overall diamond uh, balance focus created player at shortstop. He does have diamond fielding. I included his stats or his attributes and... Uh, also his uh, equipment that I have added to him in the previous video. I'll go ahead and link a tweet to where I tweeted out my attributes and equipment for the creative player as well. I'll link that in the comment section down below. But uh, we do have a pretty good ball game here. Top of the sixth inning, 5-2. And Mike Trout, I put him back in the lineup. He is going deep with a solo shot. Fastball inside and we turn on it. Finally able to kind of hit the fastball a little bit better in this video in the last couple of games I've been able to hit the fastball a little bit more consistently and that was something that was really messing me up I was not on it I was not on the fastball and able to react to the off speed as of lately so I'm trying to make those adjustments I'm trying to help out with any uh, hitting tips I can give out any tips I can give out in uh, really any video at all and just trying to help out as many people as I can so um, recently we did go into a slump I tried to uh, include examples of how I felt like I was in a slump what I felt like I was doing at the plate and how to kind of uh, break out of that so anyway we are getting back into ranked seasons I took some time off from it went into the event figured I would take a step back hopefully that would help me get my timing back hopping into custom practice and I felt like it did I felt like it was able to uh, Help me with this, you know, fastball timing on Hall of Fame. Help me square the ball up a little bit more consistently. Take some better swings as well. Just read the pitch out of the pitcher's hand a little bit easier. Simply because I am getting into custom practice on Legend. Facing the computer that is also throwing in the 100 mile an hour range or uh, right around there. So we don't have the outlier quirk or anything like that with Legend pitchers in custom practice. But it is nice to kind of go up against some of those uh, some of those harder throwers and some of those flame throwers in the game, and it will help you in this game. I mean, here the opponent went to Giovanni Gallegos, who is actually a really good gold card to use, a good gold budget reliever. This guy had more of a budget team. Uh, he has like you know the few signature series players, the few XP reward path cards, but for the most part, he had you know Gary Sanchez still in there. He had a couple of guys that are. Uh, that have a lot of power but maybe are lower rated diamonds which I think is pretty cool I like going up against different teams and a variety of different players uh, recently I've been facing a lot of the same pitchers I've been playing against a lot of the same type of players on the team so this guy brought in the gold version of Andrew Jones that card hits lefties really well and I mean we have a seven run lead but still no lead is ever safe luckily we get a double play ball that's huge I mean I'll give up the run right there to make it a 10-4 game. That doesn't bother me at all. I'm just looking to get as many outs as possible. Now we're down to the last out right here as he does uh, hit a ground ball up the middle with Glaber Torres. So I'm pretty sure that was a pinch hitter. I'm not quite sure. This guy also has Glaber Torres 
in the lineup. Also more of a budget team. Gary Sanchez, Brandon Crawford, Pete Alonzo, some of the guys that I haven't really seen as much lately. I see Christian Yelich a lot off the bench, but I don't really see a lot of people starting him. Uh, this guy, though, uh, was uh, definitely pitching pretty well. I mean, I got a little bit lucky here in the first inning. We get rewarded with a blue base hit, a, a jam base hit up the middle. But this guy was really uh, focusing on the inside corner to lefties. He was working that cutter and that slurve. And Corey Kluber can be really tough if you mix up those pitches pretty well. This dude was also throwing the sinker up and in, using it as like a backdoor sinker. There he tries to go with it up, uh, you know, up in the zone. I'm not sure if it was outside or inside, kind of missed over the middle of the plate. But that sinker is definitely effective if you can freeze them while using that cutter as well. So he kept me off balance with this uh, with this slurve. Uh, some, somehow, some way, I was able to get on first base with Mike Trout there. Scored two runs on some pretty crazy hits there in the first inning. It's, you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good in this game. And uh, we do get lucky and score a couple runs in the first inning there. But this guy's getting something going. He gets kind of a, a late jam hit. Not really. It was like a just late base hit up the middle. But we do get the double play. That ball is hit pretty well. But just right to the shortstop, Pablo Sanchez, he does make the play there with diamond fielding. This card is amazing. Has over 100 contact, over 100 power versus both sides. 94 vision, uh, 90s discipline and clutch. He also has 91 fielding with 93 reaction, 94 arm strength, and uh, 84 speed. So we end up going deep with him on a pitch I wasn't even on. That was a pitch inside. We got the barrel of the bat to it somehow, and we smacked it out of Franco Park to make it a three-run game. So now we're in the bottom of the fifth inning facing Pete Alonzo, his eight hitter. I could have easily walked him to face the pitcher, but this late in the game, I felt like he would have pinch hit. I didn't want to put anybody on base for him to go to a pinch hitter, and uh, luckily we just give up that one run. He left in his guy, and later in the game goes deep with Eddie Matthews. Two outs, same type of thing. Probably could have walked Eddie Matthews, put a guy on, maybe played a, a better matchup using Rob Dibble. But uh, at the same time, I never, I haven't given up a run with Rob Dibble until that last play. So I'm not going to try to put anybody on base to give him a chance to tie it up, if that makes sense. So even though, you know, facing Eddie Matthews, he, he hit the ball pretty well with him in this in this game so far. Uh, here later in the top of the seventh, we get something going here. Buster Posey is back in the lineup, and he's going deep, except for Eddie Matthews is changing the game entirely by himself. By hitting a home run in the previous inning and robbing me of a two-run shot, that is a three-run swing of events right there. And now we are in the bottom of the seven. Two down facing Brandon Crawford. Luckily, we don't give up another two-out rally or another two-out you know, base opportunity, base runner opportunity, or, or extra base hit that could go for a home run, extra bases, whatever the case is. Uh, here, I thought this swing was kind of interesting. I mean, the animation... For the swing uh, was was strange, but at the same time, I mean, I did move the PCI uh, a lot at the last second there, and that's not really the best strategy when you're trying to get under the ball, trying to go the other way with the pitch. It was a good okay, but it was just a, a weird swing. I wanted to include that in the video just to kind of uh, talk a little bit about it, but here we go on the top of the ninth inning. We need to get some insurance runs. Craig Biggio sending that one off the top of the wall. Thought that one was going to get out of there. But it only results in a single because it was hit so hard. So we have a great opportunity right here after Nolan Gorman hit one through the left side in between shortstop and third. Mike Trout is going to line out to third base. That's better than a double play. But that was absolutely smoked even though I wasn't really on the ball all the way. And uh, just as talking about a double play, here, here we go. Chase one. 0-2 count. Felt like that was a little bit too close to take. Didn't want to strike out looking. But I also had a pretty poor at bat with Buster Posey in that last inning. So we're down to the last three outs. We just need to capitalize, get these last three outs right here, clutch up, and don't give up a home run to Chipper Jones because that seems to happen each and every time. We only give up a base hit, and now we got to face Eddie Matthews, his three-hole hitter who has completely changed this game by robbing a home run, hitting a home run, and uh, now he hits into a double play. So we hit into a double play, left in Raleigh Fingers for his third inning of work, and he gets the double play ground ball. So he is in the yellow range for stamina. I'm not really looking to uh, throw this pitch in the strike zone. We get it on the borderline, inside corner, on the black there for the tap out to the catcher. Buster Posey makes the play, and I move up to 852 rating. This is the first time this season, or at least you know this month, since the World Series rewards have been Dustin May and Ken Griffey Jr. 
I have been above 850. So we're looking to make that final push for World Series and play the games leading up to World Series and make it. So through playing the most recent events and playing ranked seasons with Chipper Jones, I also almost have the prestige version. So hopefully we can get World Series and the prestige Chipper. Thank you all for watching. Peace out.